Welcome back. Time for the next all-new Magician 101, the show for all magicians. We have a um, few things to talk about before we get into the show. First, uh, it's uploaded late. I know. I'm sorry. Better late than never, though. Um, you know, now that the holidays are over, like Christmas and New Year's are now over, I should be able to do these on Wednesdays now. Um, I was a little busy on Wednesday. I, I had the time, but the, the few moments I did have on Wednesday, I didn't feel like doing it. So I'm doing it today. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I can get back to doing some more um, uploading on a regular schedule now that I don't have to be in at work super early. Because I'd be in at work at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and actually 7 o'clock the uh, past few weeks, before, right before Christmas. So... Uh, I should be able to be back to uploading videos when they're supposed to be uploaded, like on Wednesdays. Now, my plan, my plan, I'm not going to promise anything, is to do Challenging Tuesdays again. But we'll see how that works out. Uh, I, may, I may not do Challenging Tuesdays. I don't know. We'll see how it works. Um, also, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should. There's the links to everything down below, my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Follow me there because I'm doing another 365-day challenge if you didn't see it already. Um, what the uh, challenge, uh, if you don't know, I took on the 365-day magic challenge two years ago. This year, I'm taking on the 365 days of selfie challenge where it's basically an easy challenge. You have to upload a selfie every day for 365 days. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, I should be able to do this. It's a pretty easy challenge. It takes two seconds to upload a selfie. So we'll see how that works. So follow me on Instagram. Follow my progress there and see if I can make it to 365 days of selfies. And they're not just going to be selfies like me sitting in my bed going, selfie, there's one. I'm going to try to take the pictures in front of some pretty cool things and try to do some pretty cool things. So we'll see what happens. All right, for, uh, make sure to post your questions down below for next week. You'll give them an answer. And the first question comes from Richie Peters. Thanks. Also, what is your favorite ice cream and topping? Um, my, my favorite ice cream, cookies and cream. Now, it has to be straight cookies and cream. Can't be cookie dough, cookie crunch, um, any kind of cookie thing. It has to be cookies and cream, vanilla ice cream, and Oreo cookies. That's my favorite. So, cookies and cream. And I think Baskin Robbins 31 Flavors has the best cookies and cream, I think. Um, you know, I, I love, there's another ice cream out there, too. I think it's made by Briars. I want to say it's Briars. Extreme Cookies and Cream is really good, too. Uh, it's chocolate ice cream and then, like, chocolate, like, Oreos in there and then chocolate pieces in there, too. So it's, like, triple chocolate, basically. It's really good, too. But it's really rich. I can't eat it that much because it upsets my stomach too much, too easily. Uh, regular Cookies and Cream does not. My favorite topping, throw some sprinkles on there. Not Jimmy's. I don't call them Jimmy's, I call them sprinkles. So throw some sprinkles on some cookies and cream ice cream, and I'll devour that in, like, one sitting. I love it. All right. Mr. Tadpole221 says, do you prefer regular or pink lemonade? Good question. Um, I've never – I've tried pink lemonade once. I thought it tasted just like regular lemonade, but I like regular the best because I have that more often. Uh, he says, also, what's your favorite foreign candy? Thank you, and keep up the good work. You know, to be all honest, I don't eat candy that much. The only candy I really do eat is M&M's, and I don't, eat, I don't even eat that very often. Um, Godiva. Godiva chocolate. We sell that at, at, at the Hallmark store where I work, and it's all right. I mean, that's the only foreign candy I really know of. Oh, uh, besides... Um, Tobler tone, or whatever, however you say that, Tobler tone, Tobler tone. Um, but Godiva is not bad, the the quality of it, but it's just expensive. I mean, a little bar of chocolate, like if you just want a single bar, is like we sell them for like three bucks. That's really really expensive. And then a box of it's like twenty or forty bucks, depending on the size. But I did try a little bit one day, and it was all right. So I have to go with Godiva because that's really the only foreign candy I know. Um, I think Godiva's foreign. I don't know. I'm going with Godiva. If it's not foreign, I don't care. Uh, Mr. Tad Paul also says, thank you and keep up the good work. All right. Taylor Lunsford Magic has the next question. And I'm going to butcher the trick's name. I've been trying to say it over and over again, and I don't think I'm saying it right. But he says, what do you think of my new trick, Pretty Clip? Uh, basically, it's like prediction clip. Uh, but anyways, Pretty Clip is uh, 
I'm just going to call it clip. I'm just going to call it the paper clip trick because that's what it is. You have three uh, different colored paper clips, yellow and then red and green or whatever, whatever the three colors are. Because you can go out and probably buy your own whatever three colors you want. Um, but anyways, you have three color paper clips. The spectator chooses one completely at random, free choice, no forces, according to what um, Taylor says on his video. And they pick whatever one they want, and you show a card box, and inside the card box, one paper clip. No slits in the box, no holes, no cuts, no nothing in the box. You dump it out, and it's their color, the one that they chose. Now, I got to tell you, the trick looks really good. Really good. Um, I will say one thing. I was a little disappointed in the beginning of the trick when you said it was going to be a paperclip card trick because I was expecting more of a card trick element. When you said card trick, I'm like, oh, it's going to be something really cool. I don't know. Like, I was expecting something. Uh, with more with the cards instead of just the box. I was expecting more to have like a card. Something I was thinking about, and you're free to use this, um, because I, just, I, I was thinking about this right before I started filming. Um, if you could incorporate a card trick, let's say you had the spectator pick a card, and you can have the card folded up inside of the box, but there's a paper clip attached to the folded up card, and it's their color. That would be really cool. Um, I don't know if there is a way you could do it where you could choose any card and still have a no force of a card, because the only way I think you could accomplish that would be with a force, where you have them force a card. But there are some really deceptive card forces out there where the spectator thinks, I've had completely free choice of this card. So in keeping with the theme of the trick where there's no force of the paperclip, you could do a forcing of a card, but to the spectator it feels like they didn't get forced that card. There's some really good card forces out there that are really deceptive like that. So if you could if you could do that, that would also be really cool. Have a duplicate card in the box, a duplicate paperclip, and you could incorporate more. I just wanted to see more of the card trick element in there. One, because I do a lot more with card tricks. I'm more of a card man myself than a paperclip man. But also because you did kind of promise a card trick at the beginning, and you just used the box. So for me, that's a little bit of a just for me, that, that annoys me. But that's just my own thing. And you could take that out of the pattern and say, um, you know, one thing you could also do, I also just, just thought about this. You could say, we're going to do a paperclip and we're also going to use this box of cards. Because, you know, card boxes don't really get a lot of love in magic tricks. We usually just discard the box and use the cards. So let's use the cards. And that would, that would have been all right for me if you would have said something about we're just going to use the box and not the whole card trick thing. But anyways, other than that, I'm getting way off topic. The trick is really cool. Uh, because if, if it is true and there is no forces, it's really good. It's really good. So I cannot wait till you... Do whatever with that trick. Uh, teach it, tutorial, or sell it, whatever. I can't wait, because that looks really cool. But I would, but if myself, I'd probably play around with the trick a little bit more and add more of a card element for me. All right, and the final question, I love this next question from Wayne Carter. Hey, great show. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. He says, what's the hardest trick that you have learned to do? How long did it take to learn, and is it part of your shows? Good question, because there's not one definitive answer. There's always a trick that's going to be harder than another, uh, because you don't know a sleight of hand move. If one card trick says, oh, you got to learn this completely new sleight of hand move that you don't know how to do, that trick's going to take a lot longer to learn, because you got to learn a new move to add to your show. With that being said, um, I've thought about this all week, and I'm like, what is the hardest trick? Probably the hardest two tricks that I ever learned how to do. They're both Bill Malone tricks, Sam the Bellhop and Rub-A-Dub-Dub. Sam the Bellhop, not as much because you're not doing much. You're doing sleight of hand in it, but you don't have to worry about doing a ton of difficult sleight of hand, if that makes any sense. I'll explain more in a moment because with Rub-A-Dub-Dub, there's so many phases to that routine. All you're doing in Sam the Bellhop, you're doing the sleight of hand, but you're also just telling the story and turning cards over. In Rub-A-Dub-Dub, you are placing balls and doing a whole cups and ball routine. And cups and ball routines are really tough to learn. Or, I'm sorry, really tough. It's 
they're not tough to do. I don't want to say they're tough to do, but there's so many moves when you get into the more advanced cups and ball routines that are out there. you got to remember all the steps as well as, as interact with your audience. So that was a, both of those were tough to learn, mainly because of the story. You have to remember the story. So that's what makes that those two tough. you got to remember Sam the Bellhop, and you got to remember Rub-A-Dub-Dub. Now, for me, learning new things and learning stories like that, it it's, I don't want to say super hard for me to do, to, like, remember, because some people can just look at, like, a movie script, like, if they're going out to do, like, if they're going to be in a play or something, they read through it, like, five or six times, and they've learned their lines. For me, I have to memorize it and keep going over and over about 20 times, but I do get it eventually, so, um... You know, and that's what my, and I talked about this a few weeks ago, I have that learning disability that, that I had to have, like, IEPs in school and things. Uh, and that's part of my learning disability. I can't learn things super quick like some people. It takes me a while, but I do get it, and I do do it. So those are probably the two hardest tricks. There's other tricks, like I said, that are hard to do, like when I first learned how to do the Elmsley count for some trick, I, one of the, tr- I don't even remember what trick I was learning, but that was, that trick was hard for me because I didn't know the Elmsley count, so I had to learn that as well. So I would probably go with Rub a Dub Dub and Sam the Bellhop, <clears throat> Sam the Bellhop, and I do use both of those in my shows. Not really Rub a Dub Dub as much because that takes up a lot of pocket space. You have three golf balls, um, Three cups and the and uh, the pom poms. So that takes up a, and three pom poms, and that takes up a lot of space in your pocket, especially the golf balls. So I don't do that as much, and because it's such a long drawn out trick that if I did it at every show, it wouldn't make any sense. So I do do it, but not as much, and I do do Sam the Bellhop an awful lot too. Again, that's another long trick, takes a long time to do because of you're telling this whole story. But I still do that as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to post your questions down below for next week. I'll give them an answer. Follow me on uh, Instagram for my 365 days of selfie contest. And I'll see you next Wednesday for another all-new Magician 101. If you'd like to see more awesome content, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. New videos are posted every day of the week. Also, check out my website and register so you can post in the forums. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, like me on Facebook, add me to your Google Plus circles, and check out my merchandise store to pick up some awesome swag. 444RR, game shows, magic, and more.